Spooky season is almost upon us and since becoming a mom, I have gotten more into DIYing and decorating for Halloween. But I've also learned through that process that it is a fine line between kind of cheesy and tacky and high-end items that will fit within your fall decor so you don't have to do too much work to add a little bit of spooky touches. So come along with me today. I have got a ton of inspiration for you so that you can get DIYing for Halloween and incorporate it right into your home decor. You're watching Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge welcome back to my Whiskey Craft Buddies who are here each week to DIY with me. If you're not already a craft buddy, no worries. You can join us super quick. Just hit subscribe down below and you won't miss any future DIY or budget home decor videos. I post new ones every single week. I'm always looking for ways that I can create large scale items on a budget and these spooky mirrors are it. I grabbed just a variety of sizes of frames from my local thrift store and I looked for ones that had metallic outsides. I removed all of the pieces and then I took the glass out, spritzed it with some water, and then over the top of the water, I sprayed some mirror effect spray paint. I took a paper towel and just blotted some of the spray paint off to get a kind of blotchy look. And then I repeated with just a little bit more because my paper towel was already wet, I could blotch it again in different spots so it really looked layered. Once I got the effect that I wanted, I let that completely dry. And then I flipped it over and spray painted the back with a black matte spray paint. That is going to create the spooky effect. Then you can pop it right back into the frame. And these things are awesome for staging. You get that mirror effect as you can see me getting the footage. But it's also great for layering to style a variety of different things. And these are so quick and easy. And I think each frame was under five bucks. Win. For Halloween, I absolutely love adding ghosts to my decor. I think they're so fun and whimsy. And I was inspired by my friend Sarah Jane at Chica on the Cheap who made this large ghost to create a smaller shelf sitter version. I took a styrofoam ball that I had in my craft stash. You can get these at Dollar Tree. And I added some skewers from Dollar Tree as well. Four in each edge. And then I took a flour sack towel. You can use a sheet or even some Sherpa fabric. I cut the flour sack towel in half so it was a little bit more sheer, draped it over the top, and then finished it off with just a couple of these cute little eyeballs cut out of scrap black felt. I attached them with some hot glue and literally that was it. It turned out so cute and it's such a fun little vignette, super cheap to make. It's also a great use of any scraps that you have around the house. And I think I might try my hand at a big one later on this year for my porch. Now to go along with my love of ghosts, I had to dupe this Gus the Ghost Pottery Barn pillow. I've been wanting one for years and I finally made the jump to dupe it. They usually just have the ghost, but this year he is holding the little pumpkin, so that was the nudge I needed to do it. I grabbed this pillow insert that I had just sitting around my house. It's an 18 by 18. I tied the center and then tucked the two edges in to kind of give the shape of the ghost. Then I took a half yard piece of that Sherpa, so I bought a yard, cut it in half, and then I used one for one ghost, one for the other. You're just gonna lay it out to get the draping that you want, trim it until it's good. And then I used my upholstery needle and just some white cotton thread from Dollar Tree to kind of do an invisible hook there to make sure that the Sherpa was not gonna come off of my pillow form. But you could easily take it off and use that pillow form for something else later. Then that way you could just store the outside part and not have to worry about that. All you have to do after that is add two eyes and bada bing, bada boom. Now, what if you want Gus the Ghost holding a pumpkin? That one's just as easy. I'm gonna do a trick to kind of make it look like it's floating with some white twine again. So this cotton twine, I'm just looping it from underneath the one side of Gus to the other side, and I'm tying a knot just underneath the surface of the Sherpa fabric. Then that way it is going to sit there and it's gonna look like his little hands are inside of the sheet that's making him a ghost holding up the pumpkin. And these things definitely have stolen my heart. I love them so much. And $85.50 versus my 12 bucks, which was an 85% savings. This stack of witches books are super quick and easy to make with cheap Dollar Tree supplies. Or you could even use some that you already have. I grabbed these three different sizes of hardcover books from Dollar Tree and I painted all of them black so that they would match. If you can find three black books at Dollar Tree, that would even save you a step, but black paint on top of them, it's pretty quick. I did the edges just like you would with a book cover so it all looked like it came that way. And then I took a disposable makeup sponge, blotched on a little bit of white as well as some silver paint just to give it that weathered look. It would also look really pretty kind of buffed out with gold metallic. 
Then I just took a paint pen, wrote broom care, potions and spells, things that you would think you would see on a witch's bookshelf and tied them up and they were good to go. This is a fun activity that you could even do with kids because it doesn't have to be perfect. They could add whatever color they want to the sides and how fun of a keepsake would this be if you had your kids write what they wanted on the side of the books. You can get them out year after year. Now, if you're a diehard craft buddy, you know that I love my free printables and Halloween is no exemption. So I have got a wide variety of free printables for you over on my blog, both the Hocus Pocus pack that you are seeing here. And I also have just some general Halloween ones as well. Everything from artwork to this one, which is a script of a scene from Hocus Pocus, one of my favorites when they think the road is a babbling brook and it's actually a road with blacktop. And then I've got a bunch of different ones as you can see here. The other thing you can do with these is add them to signs from Dollar Tree or really anywhere. You can find them in the dollar section at a lot of other stores as well. I just cut my ones out to the size and you can print them on just a regular dust dust printer. You don't need anything crazy. I print them out. Out, I cut them up and then I stick them on with double-sided tape and it really makes over the sign quick and easy to do and then you've got some cheap custom signs or you could just keep it super simple and put it on a clipboard from Dollar Tree or frame them all these are free over on my blog link in the description I really wanted to add some bats to a vignette that I had, but all the packs I saw were really expensive. So I decided to grab some Dollar Tree poster board and put it on a Cricut mat and use my Cricut to cut it out. Now you could easily do this without a Cricut, just print out a picture of a bat, trace it onto the poster board and you can cut it out there as well. You could also use black cardstock. You just want something thicker than just black like construction paper because you want it to be able to hold up. I cut this on the poster board setting and I made sure to carefully peel it off. I just used the design space bat template. I have a project linked over on my profile down in the description if you want to be able to just click make it. You're able to just carefully peel these off. I use my scraper to help as well and then you're good to add them to the wall. I used just some regular scotch tape, created some little tape rolls and put them on the body of all my bats. Then I bent up the wings just ever so slightly to make it look like they were flying. And then you can go to town adding as many or as little, whatever you're feeling to the wall. It was the perfect addition to this little vignette. And I also added some of them to the pumpkins underneath. So it really just looked like they were kind of coming out from everywhere. It is definitely a Halloween vibe, but it's not too spooky, especially because I have a toddler. I'm not trying to go too scary, but I think this is fun. It definitely looks curated and styled. And it made me so happy because I made all these bats for $1.25 and I still have some poster board left over. I was inspired by someone I follow over on Instagram called Mother Time to create these really pretty candy corn little topiary type wrapped yarn things. I call them cones. Not quite sure what the vernacular is, but I just know they're cute. I grabbed some Dollar Tree yarn and then you can get the cones really at any place. You can get the yarn really at any craft store as well. I just wrapped them with a little bit of hot glue and these things turned out so fun. They're great to add a little bit of color to your setup. And I also like that they have a little bit of a primitive vibe with the muted colors. Easy peasy, super fun. Now what would Halloween be without some sweet treats? So here is how I created these awesome Hocus Pocus inspired treats for my watch party last year. And I'm definitely making them again this year. Step one is to make the brownies for the books and we're not doing anything crazy here. We're just doing a box mix. And what I like to do is replace the oil with the same amount of melted butter, but you can make it accordance to the box. That's just personal preference for the kind of moist texture it gives the brownies. I'm gonna put them into the pan, make sure it's greased and bake them according to the package instructions. And then I'm gonna cut out all of these little pieces that are the size of the books. So you want kind of longer rectangles. Then I'm taking a mixture of goodies I found just in the baking section at Walmart. These large eyeballs as well as some easy squeeze icing just to make it super simple. We're going to do a long line of black down the one side, outline our eyes, and then also create the little stitching on either side. A couple little loop de dupes on the top and bottom. And as you can see, these don't have to be perfect to be super fun and cute. This is also another great kids, grandkids project, especially if you want to watch Hocus Pocus or even another Halloween themed video. It doesn't have to be just Hocus Pocus. That's just the book that I modeled these off. Then I added them to this cute little tray I got from Target. And then it was time to make my little Winnie Sanderson mouths. So I cut a cookie, again, store bought because we're not trying to go too crazy here. It saved me a ton of time, but if you want to make it, you go right ahead to each their own, do what makes you feel good. 
Then I am going to just create a little bit of like a lipstick situation on the front so it looks like a mouth after the two are hooked together. Spread it out with a knife and then add two mini marshmallows to create kind of that signature buck tooth type of look that one of Fred Sanderson has. I think these are so fun. They were a hit at the party and they are just as much fun to make as they are to display and it's going to look like you tried super hard. And if brownies aren't your vibe, no worries. You can make an actual Sanderson Sisters spell book for your decor. I made this one following a tutorial from my good friend Bargain Bethany, and it was super easy to do. It was a mixture of some cardboard, some hot glue, and it looks funky until you paint it. I used nutmeg brown. I just added some additional effects with gray and gold, and bada bing, bada boom, I've got a book. I love adding pop culture elements and like movies into my seasonal decor and this one is no exception. I grabbed some apples from Amazon which I will link all the supplies from today's video down below so you can easily find them in the description. It's just underneath the video and I started by taking these fake apples and drawing a poison apple face from Snow White. Then I took my glue gun and traced around that outline so that it was raised and then I got rid of any of the little wispies. I mixed together some kind of neon green paint as well as some of this Arteza sparkle paint to really make it look like the gooey poison apple that you see in the movie. And then using those glue pieces as a guide, I am painting the inner parts so that you can see the red nose and the red eyes. It ended up taking me three coats to finish this off, but once I did, it definitely gave the vibe I was looking for. And I also painted a couple of them white because in the movie, you've got both green and white poison apples. Then I wanted to have a sign to add to the setup, and this was actually a mystery box item that I was sent from my friend Jennifer at Little Bit of Calm and Crazy. So I added the Evil Queen's Apple Orchard to it with some heat transfer vinyl, and I used the heat transfer vinyl versus regular because I didn't have glitter regular vinyl, and I wanted this thing to sparkle so you could use either or. I used the lowest setting on my mini press to add both of these after cutting them out of my Cricut, and it was the perfect addition. This file came from Etsy, so I will link that down in the description if you're interested in getting the same one. This is not my file, but I definitely support other creators when I can if I don't have the time or the patience to create a file myself. This next one is for my wood build junkies and we're going to use some fence pickets for this fun project. I'm using the wider cedar fence pickets so these are about five and a half inches wide and I cut the tops off of four of them to be 20, 18, 15, and 12 inches tall. I also went through with some scrap little one by two furring strips to cut them down so I could brace my sign. Once everything had been cut and sanded, I went through for the front and the sides with some white chalk paint, and then I used my nail gun to brace those pieces together face down. So you're gonna want all of your unpainted sides facing up, so then that way you can put the back on. You can paint the back as well, I just didn't think it was necessary because I'm gonna have this leaned up against a wall. I needed one more quick scrap piece of wood to brace the top two of those ghosts together. And to make them really look like ghosts, I added just some faces with paint marker and this turned out so good. My last step was to seal it with some polycrylic. I like this triple thick and while it does say interior for things that aren't going to be directly rained on, I really like it because it doesn't yellow. And that is gonna protect my little ghost buddies from any elements. This is so fun to display either inside or outside your house and it's quick and easy to put together. Another area of my house that is great for decorating seasonally is my dining room table. I had somebody reach out to me last year and ask if I could make some witch's broom napkin rings because they saw them for really expensive at another store and I said sure. So I grabbed these from Dollar Tree as well as these little rings but you can use shower rings or you can do this to attach it to napkin rings you already have. I just needed to cut down both the broom piece as well as the long outside piece and I went ahead and just used the little sheer ribbon from the broom already to tie it onto the napkin ring. The nice thing is you can easily take it off and add something else for the seasons and then that way you only need one napkin ring or if you want more hold you can use hot glue. All you have to do is slide it on to your napkin and you've got these cute little witches brooms. This is great for hocus pocus watch parties or just to set on the plates in your formal dining room so it looks like it's all put together fun and cute. 
Another take on this is using a bat shape instead of a witch's broom to create a napkin ring. And this is a template that I just drew out really quick for myself to create the wings of a bat. Now you could easily cut out the bat shape that we did earlier from Cricut Design Space, but this one I thought was nice because it made the wings look a lot wider. I ended up tying the center with some jute twine and then I tied it on to the little napkin ring and it just looks like there's a cute little bat on the napkin ring. You can get as creative as you want with this. I also made some of these with pumpkins for fall that you can swap back out after Halloween. So tons of different options, quick and easy to put together and it makes your table look really put together. Another fun way to use felt and bat shapes are for garlands. Now Dollar Tree sometimes carries these felt shapes so you could easily cut your own or you could buy these to save a step. And I'm using a doll upholstery needle to hang the bats because I need to puncture each wing to get my jute twine to go through. I want to make sure the extra jute twine is in the back so then that way you can just see the bats and you don't have a line of jute twine across the front. This is totally a five minute project and it adds such an impact. Hey craft buddy, thanks so much for sticking with me through this long video. I know a lot of you enjoy these because you just turn them on in your craft space and we kind of craft together, which I absolutely love. If you've made it this far, please take a second and leave a quick comment for me. That really helps my channel. You can either leave me a Halloween emoji, let me know your favorite project, or you can just say, I'm still with you. That helps out my channel. Any little bit does go a long way. Also give this video a thumbs up if you can. It takes two seconds and that also helps my channel as well. If you love my content and you aren't getting notifications from YouTube, Something else you can do is bop down to the description and fill out a quick little form. You can opt in for my emails and I will send you an email every time I post a new video. And don't worry if you're watching me on your TV because I have a solution for you if you want to opt into those emails. Just go ahead and open your phone's camera or your iPad, whatever's sitting by you, scan this code right here, and you can opt in to get emails every time I post a new video and that way you won't miss out on any whiskey and whip fun. Now let's get back into the Halloween DIYs. A couple weeks ago, I was scrolling through TikTok and this popped up, Finn saw it and asked if we could get one. Well, it was $129. So I thought, okay, I don't wanna say no. So I just said, how about we make one? I went to Michael's and grabbed a white and orange version of these tall pumpkins. And I grabbed four of these ladles from Dollar Tree. Now, if you're only making one pumpkin, you only need two ladles. I'm making two of these here. I'm using my tin snips to cut off the top ladle part because for the ears of this Mickey pumpkin, I didn't want to use foam or cardboard because I didn't think it would match as well. I wanted to try to get a plastic and that worked perfect. Now I've got a free printable face for you over on my blog. You can literally print it out and not have to worry about sizing it if you're using the same size pumpkins as I am. I just traced it onto the front of my pumpkin and I also did it on the front of my white pumpkin. Then to cut these out, I used this professional hot knife I got from Michaels. This is not necessary. It definitely made it a lot easier, but you could easily do it with a pumpkin carving kit or a serrated knife from your kitchen. This was nice though, because it made clean cuts and it made the job go by a lot quicker. I just carefully waited for it to heat up. And then also again, carefully is the keyword here, went through and I had to get a little trial and error because I had never used one before, but once I did, I was able to easily cut this out. And I also think that the more simple you keep your shape, like this face was really simple, it won't cause a huge issue for you. The last step that I needed to do was add a hole in the back, just a regular shape for some lights. And then I cut two slits on either side of the head so I could add my little ladle pieces. That was a lot of trial and error. I just cut it so that my pieces would fit in there and then hooked them in with hot glue. For the white face, I covered the inside with black just because the white on white wasn't standing out as much as I wanted, but the white on orange worked just fine. Now I plan to add a tea light candle to the white ghost Mickey pumpkin, but this one, I wanted it to glow like the inspiration. And I was like, how am I gonna do this? Well, I decided to try to put in a little bit of yellow tissue paper I added this pack of orange lights from Dollar Tree that you can just plug in. And I added a couple dabs of hot glue right on the inside of the mouth and the eyes and I carefully hooked the tissue paper to it. I tried to use double stick tape, but that didn't work, but the glue held it in the perfect spot. And then it was time to check with Finn to see if he approved. Emails some pumpkin. He definitely loves this thing and asked me to plug it in all the time now. I need to add the tea light candle, like I said, to the white one. It was a very 
straightforward, simple project. And I'm really happy with how the ladle ears turned out as well. Let me know down below, are you a Disney Halloween fan? I used to be a little bit, but now that I've got a toddler, we are full send on that one. This one might feel super random with what we're using to make these candles, but promise they will turn out good. You're gonna grab a plunger handle from Dollar Tree or if you already have some dowel rods at home or you could grab them at the hardware store as well. This is just really cost effective. I cut off the rounded end as well as the piece of the handle that goes into the actual rubber part of the plunger. And I ended up marking and cutting them down to four different lengths that I wanted, ranging from four inches to seven inches tall. Then I just gave it a quick sand to make sure that I got off any residue from the sticker as well as any rough patches from cutting. Then I'm gonna mix together a little bit of water as well as some black paint and apply it directly to the dowel rod to give it this kind of spooky rustic look. Now what are candles without a flame? We're gonna make those out of hot glue. You need some sort of mat that the glue's not gonna stick to. So I'm using a silicone mat, but you could also easily just use some wax paper or parchment paper. Go ahead and draw your shapes on there, let them completely cool and they're gonna harden. Once the flame shape is hardened, then you can go through with a little bit of paint or a paint marker and add a little bit of yellow, a little bit of gold, a little bit of orange, whatever suits your fancy to make it look like the flames that you want. And then I added a little bit more hot glue to the tops of all of my little faux wood candles so I could add my flame. Now you can either leave the glue as is and add these effects like I did, or if you really want it to kind of blend in differently, you could paint the quote unquote melted wax, which is the hot glue at the top black. My last step was to tie them together with a little bit of jute twine, and these things are the perfect addition to any setup. They look nice and spooky, and what I like is they're smaller and they're great for tiered trays. And what I like is they are super fun and festive, but they don't take up a ton of room. This next one is one of my favorite seasonal hacks by far, and that's finding a sign that you like that's way out of your price range. Finding a clearance sign at literally any store, right now they're clearancing all the summer stuff out. Grab a cheap sign, paint it. So this one I'm just painting with black chalk paint, but whatever color of your inspo, you can also do this with fall themed decals as well. And then I cut out this Hocus Pocus file that I created. All of the files that are mine are free over on my blog. I will link them down below. You just head over to the blog post, scroll down to the bottom, and there's a box that says Whiskey Files. You can download it super quick and easy. You just pop your email in and you're good to go. I add these files with my paper transfer tape just to not peel up any paint. And then you've got a super cheap sign that you didn't have to spend a ton for and you can customize. Theirs was 40 bucks, mine was $3, 90% off. I know so many of you love Hocus Pocus, so I had to include these next few projects because they are perfect for a Hocus Pocus setup. This cutout here of the tombstone came from Joann's, but you could also cut this out in some Dollar Tree like foam board if you want. I'm starting by painting it a gray color to give it a base. And then I'm using a mixture of like gray and black to splotch around the outside just to make it look old and worn. Then I am using this cutout that says here lies Emily Binks and I stuck this on and then realized I put 1963 so I ended up fixing it. Don't worry the file in the folder is correct but had a little um, transpose error there but nonetheless this is great for Emily Binks to go next to my fun little Binks cat I found on Amazon. Then to also add to that vignette I spray painted some thrifted candlesticks black added a DIY black flame candle, and I also added some of these Amazon pillar candles. I like it because it adds to the spooky vibe, but I'm not afraid my toddler is gonna light the house on fire if he bumps into it, which is awesome. The other thing that I added to this that I absolutely love is this candy bucket. The bucket itself came from the Target dollar spot for five bucks, and I just added some white vinyl that says, we're back, which is super fun and festive, and it's perfect in, any situation, but this is also great if you have a Hocus Pocus watch party. It was so fitting for Hocus Pocus too because they were indeed back. I also used it for candy for when the trick-or-treaters came. It was nice to be able to hold on to the handles while the kids grabbed the candy out. Now I have a whole Hocus Pocus video that I did last year with a ton more DIYs. So if this is your vibe, I will link that up in the iCards as well as down below. All the details with how I did the party, etc. You can check that out. 
Another whiskey in with project that has definitely stood the test of time that I bring out every year, I made this about three years ago, is this hand-painted sign. I've got a full tutorial that I will link for you to show you how to paint this yourself. And if you're not a Hocus Pocus person, you could easily do just this general Halloween one. They're really easy to hand paint and you just need either some reclaimed wood if you've got some free wood or you can make it with some fence pickets. So you can get those for a couple bucks at your hardware store. So a few different options, but it turns out so cute. It's so fun. Trick-or-treaters have always made comments on it when they come up and I love Hocus Pocus. And super quick before we leave the Hocus Pocus section of this video, I also recently made some awesome plywood cutouts of the three Sanderson sisters that glow that I'm so excited to put out this year for Halloween. So if that interests you, I will link that video up above as well as down below so you can go check out and see how you can make your own. This is another one where you literally need plywood and a jigsaw, quick and easy and such a huge impact. This next one is so quick and easy. You're gonna grab yourself some plates at Dollar Tree. I love these orange ones. And I just cut out some fun faces on my Cricut from Cricut Design Space. These jack-o'-lantern faces are all from Design Space. I've got this project saved and you just apply them, stick these on your table, super, super cute. Last year, one of my favorite dupes were these handmade terracotta jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. I made an entire set for my mantle. It turned out so good and it was perfect for my Halloween decor. Well, of course, this year when they came out with a kind of black charcoal version, I had to do that too. So I went to Michael's and grabbed this large pumpkin. It's originally $29.99, but I got it 30% off and I had a little voucher coupon because I spend a lot of money on craft supplies at Michael's apparently. I grabbed a small one from Michaels and I also grabbed this $10 one from Marshalls. Now what I really like about these is that they don't have like the scary spooky face because at our house we do fun spooky. I have a toddler like I mentioned and also I'm not big into the like super spooky Halloween like I like Hocus Pocus the movie like I'm not trying to watch like super scary stuff. I just like fun like let's put on a costume Halloween not like you know super spooky Halloween. I digress, but we're going to mix some baking soda for this first layer with some just black acrylic paint. This is regular old baking soda and I added a decent amount because you want this to be thick. That is going to give you the texture of stone pottery versus this glazed ceramic. Same thing with this other one. We're going to cover them fully and you also want to make sure you get in the eyes, nose, mouth, make sure all of those areas are covered completely. Here is what it looks like. You're gonna have chunks in your paint and that is what you want because you want it to look nice and rustic and aged and all that fun stuff. So here's what it looks like when I let them completely dry. And then I decided to add a little bit of orange paint to the inside of this one. Now, I probably should have done this before I painted the outside black. That would have made life a lot easier, but you know, hindsight's 2020. But I just stuck my paintbrush up through the bottom where you could add a light and painted the inside orange to match the inspo. I also added a little bit of sand and flour on a little bit of wet paint at the top just to give it a little extra oomph. And you probably could do without the flour, but I just used a little bit of sand from Finn's Sandbox and it added just a little more grit to the top. I also was dying to try out this diffuser hack that I have seen all over the internet. So many people have done it. I don't know where it originated, but I wanted to try it too. You basically plug in a diffuser. This one I got for really cheap on Amazon. You can drill a hole in the back of your plastic cauldron that you can get pretty much anywhere right now for Halloween time. You feed it through the back, you turn on your diffuser, and then you can add some things like this deco mesh. You could also add some clear holiday ornaments if you have those, and it looks like a bubble cauldron. These little Sanderson sister dolls were one of your guys's favorites last year so I had to bring them back and share the tutorial again because they are so fun for a watch party or just a Halloween setup in general. So let's do the big ones first. I started with a large styrofoam cone as well as a large styrofoam ball that I got from Michaels and I ended up painting the styrofoam balls at the top a flesh color so that would be their faces. 
Then I painted the three bodies, red, purple, and green, to match the sisters' outfits. Then I decided to kind of try to make some curly hair with my heat gun. So I wrapped some yellow yarn around and heated it up. I just wrapped it around these like little dowel rod sticks and it gave some wave to it. It definitely wasn't like the best best, but I did like that I could, you know, add a base layer and it have a little bit of a wave to it because that is how Sarah's hair is. Once I covered the whole head for Sarah, I moved on to Winifred and I used these two little like flat end wood balls that I already had in my stash. And then I wrapped those to create her two buns in orange yarn. And then I continued around the rest of her head. I just really didn't have a rhyme or reason. I just used glue as needed to try to get everything to sit on her head. Now for Mary's, I had to use a little bit of like fishing line wire stuff that I had. This is just like jute wire. And I wrapped her hair around to get that, you know, beehive with the little zoop on the end. And then I wrapped around a little bit of purple yarn. Now I feel like their cloaks made all the difference. So I grabbed these three colors in kind of just a velvet material. And you really don't need that much, like a quarter of a yard and you will still have some left over. I cut a piece to fit Winnie just to kind of see. And I left some additional slack up above at the top. So it kind of looked like either the collar or the hood of it. And what are these sisters without their individual objects for flying? The broom is just a Dollar Tree broom for Winifred, but I needed to make a mop for Sarah. And so I took some Dollar Tree nautical like white rope and I pulled the little strands apart, glued it to the bottom of a dowel rod to start making it look like a mop. Then the vacuum was a little bit more involved, but it actually wasn't too bad. I created this kind of like curved shape and I made about six of them, glued them together, and this is going to give us the head of our vacuum. I added some hot glue to the tops and bottoms and kind of wrapped it just like I would a present in this jute like wrapping paper so it looked like one individual piece instead of all of those corrugated pieces together. I used a dowel rod for the vacuum's handle and then I also went through with a little bit more of that wrapping paper to create the bag of the vacuum. And then to get it to puff up, I just put a little bit of polyfill that I had. You could use Kleenex, you could use cotton balls, whatever you have. I painted my little stick the silver color. I painted the head of the vacuum with a little bit of green paint. And then I used hot glue to attach the bag as well as just a little bit of black yarn to look like the cord for the vacuum. So that was very down and dirty. It was a quick put together, but I think they look really cute. They definitely are on brand and I love them so much I had to make some smaller ones. So I did the same thing pretty much with the hair and the cloaks and everything, but instead of using styrofoam, I used wood and wood little balls for the bodies. So I painted the bodies as well as the heads, the same colors that I did for the larger ones. And then I had to use some little chopped up sticks for the hair to get the buns to stick up and as I was going I was just being resourceful and then these fit really well with this cute little witch's brew coffee mug that I got from the dollar spot at Target. They all look super good next to my little bubbling cauldron and this was perfect for my watch party and I'm definitely breaking these out again this year. I've really started to love hand painting. It's something that I didn't feel like I was good at and I don't feel like I'm great at it still, but I have been getting better. So I created my own base for the sign because I had some leftover fence pickets, but you could easily grab like a clearance sign or just a Dollar Tree like canvas board. Both of these boards I cut to 24 inches. I made sure to give it a really good sand so it would take the paint and be easier to you know work with. And then I used my nail gun with one inch nails to attach a just scrap piece of wood to the back to brace it. I was worried it was gonna move on me so I ended up just grabbing a couple more pieces of scrap. This is why I don't throw away my scraps because they're great for holding together the backs of your signs. We're gonna start with a base coat of black just so it kind of looks like I'm drawing on a chalkboard. And then I found this hand-drawn image on Pinterest. And what I like to do is search like hand-drawn Halloween, whatever, and that will allow you to really see other creations and that helps me kind of visualize things. Once our black base coat is dry, I went on to Pinterest and found this really fun mason jar image. And so I did my own take on it. I wanted it to be taller and a little bit skinnier, not as wide. And then I broke out some orange paint and got to work. 
This is a fun part where you can seriously make it your own. You could also do the same like building of the sign and add Cricut decals if you want. But this was fun to just be able to hand draw and just kind of sit, listen to a podcast and just kind of zen out, which I really liked. Then once everything was dry, I made sure to go through and add some polyurethane to the top just to make sure that nothing happened to my painting. And as you can see, I added a little bit of a gap at the top, even with my squiggles. So then that way I could go back through and add a little bit of ribbon to finish it off. So this is some ribbon that I got at Old Time Pottery a while ago. It's just candy corn ribbon. I tied it on the top and I think the mixture of texture really makes it pop. So I just tied my pieces, tied a traditional bow. I even added a little bit of raffia to give it more texture and this thing was good to go. This one is a Kirkland's dupe. I saw this porch sign and thought I could do a fun take on it for my own version. And I ended up starting at Home Depot. I got myself a one by 10 by six foot common board under $10, which is a super great deal. Now I didn't worry about cutting it because I wanted it to be that tall, but if it's too tall for you, you could definitely cut it down or get a shorter one. I'm starting by staining it with some early American stain and I ended up doing a fall motif on the back so if you're interested in seeing how that fall one went about i will link the original video down below so you can see how that all came together for the halloween side i painted that with a black chalk paint so that i could easily draw with pencil to transfer my design I have this Hey Boo as a free printable over on my blog. So this is a way that you can make a porch sign if you don't have a Cricut, which is great. Obviously, if you have a Cricut, you could cut out the decals. But here, you just take the paper and on the back where your letters are, scribble over it with some pencil. You can also use tracing paper, but if you don't have tracing paper on hand, this is an easy way to do it. Pencils are cheap. You can you know, scribble over the back here. And then I just took some painter's tape and stuck it on the sign where I wanted the letters. Then it's as simple as tracing over those letters and it's going to give you a light outline that you can then go back through and paint. I like to use paint markers, especially in situations like this, because it's so much easier to get the paint where you want it versus trying to use a paintbrush. And I also added two ghosts plus a B, so the B-O-O -O is B ghost ghost. I went back in with some regular paint on the inside. I just did the outlines with that painter's marker. And then to add a little bit of extra fun, I did stripes on the top and bottom in orange just to make it really seem Halloween-like. Then again, we're going through with that triple thick polyurethane from Verithane just to seal everything nice and tight. And on the back, I did Hello Autumn in vinyl. So I'm doing that polyacrylic right over the top as well. So if you decide to do vinyl for the Halloween sign, you can do that as well. So here is the one side and the other side. So you could easily flip it from autumn to Halloween and then back again to autumn for the rest of the fall season before you get your Christmas stuff out or whatever holiday you celebrate after fall. Something great to keep in mind, especially if you don't have an area for a porch sign, but you want something similar, is to find a smaller version at a place like Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree sells signs like this usually every season. They had some for summer. They've got some fall ones. And what you can do is either apply vinyl right to it, or you can do the tracing method I showed you in the previous project. Either way will work. These Happy Halloween files, as well as the Adams Family file you will see in just a second, is free over on my blog. I also have a template so you can add your name. So instead of the Adams family, you can put the Johnson family, the Jones family, the Garcia family, whatever you wanna you know, do that. That's also a fun little hostess gift if you're going to a Halloween party for their kids or adults. I just went ahead and applied the vinyl to this one. Same with the one for the Adams family and super cute, super fun. And it's definitely something that you can put in an apartment or in your house instead of having a porch sign and needing to find room for it. Now on the other end of the outdoor decor spectrum is this Haunted Mansion sign. This is the first one I made last fall and I started by going to Home Depot and gathering all my supplies. Now I have a full video that's breaking down all the supplies that you need to make the actual post to hang the sign. 
So I will link that down below. You can head over there and I will show you exactly how I made it. It was a pretty easy process to put everything together and it has also lasted out in the elements for a year now and it just needs another quick coat of sealant, but it is doing really well. So just an FYI there, if you want to make it, it lasts for a good amount of time. To make the hanging sign, I just did three pieces of fence picket, braced the back, and then I used a couple cans of paint that I had in my garage to create kind of a scalloped effect, and then used my jigsaw to cut it out. I ended up cutting one side and then using that piece as kind of a guide for the other side as well as the bottom so it looked a little bit more symmetrical, and here is what it looked like when I was done. I ended up sanding and painting the entire thing black and then added a Cricut decal, this Haunted Mansion decal, and I was able to just kind of stamp really lightly over the top the paint. And then to finish it off, you need to drill two holes in the top of your sign and put these C hooks. You just twist it right on in. And again, if you head over to that video, this is kind of a lengthy project. So I will refer you to that original video to get the slower tutorial. But here's a gist of how everything came together. And then you hang it with some chains that I got as well at Home Depot. I love this thing. I have a winter version as well as a spring version and I will be making a fall version in next week's video. My fence pickets for fall is coming next week. So if you're watching this the week it comes up, it's coming in hot. And if you're watching this after the fence pickets have come up, I will link it up above and down below for you. These coasters are so fun and they're all free printables over on my blog again. You guys, I love sharing my files with you because I'm making them for the videos anyway. And I know a lot of you either don't like to design, don't have the time to design, whatever it is. And I just wanna make sure that you feel empowered to create your own items for your house. And I don't want the design to be a barrier. I printed these out on photo paper, but you could easily do it on cardstock as well. I mod podged them on, gave them a coat of sealant on top, and then just did the four corners with little pieces of felt so they don't scratch my table. This set of four, super quick and easy to make, especially because these tiles are like a couple cents at Home Depot. You can buy them individually, and you've got Hocus Pocus coasters. If you watch my recent mystery box video, this one is going to look familiar to you, but I had to share it in here because it has gotten such great feedback on TikTok and Instagram as well. I took this three piece Dollar Tree sign and cut it into three little signs and you can easily make these as big or as small as you want because they are square designs. I mixed up a purple that I thought really resembled the Haunted Mansion purple and painted my third sign and then I left one just white. And I cut out these files that are both Taylor Swift and Haunted Mansion inspired. Now I know that's super niche, but that is so much my personality right now. I'm into the Halloween stuff. I am also a Swifty. And so I used some of her lyrics mixed with some Haunted Mansion imagery to kind of create a double entendre here, if you will. So this one, this is our place we make the rules is from the song Lover. The one above it, I can't go back, I'm haunted, is the song Haunted. And then I also did a Madame Leota little crystal ball that says, I can still make the whole place shimmer. I went back and forth on if it should say, I can make the whole place shimmer or I can make the whole place spooky, but I stuck with the traditional lyric just because I thought that was fun. She's kind of the leading lady in the Haunted Mansion to keep everybody on track and the one that a lot of people know. I was inspired to make these signs by this awesome shirt from the small business, The Lost Bros. I have ordered so many shirts, including some for the upcoming Pinners Conference that I'm going to be at in Texas from them. They have some cute Hocus Pocus ones. If you're a Disney fan, be sure to check them out. Thanks for the inspo for my home decor. <laughs> then to give them a little kickstand, I popped some clothespins in half and just glued one half to the back of each sign to make it stand up so I could have a full display like this. I cannot wait to put these out. I know so many of you have told me in the comments, you can't wait to see my Haunted Mansion setup. Neither can I. I've got some new Pop Funkos, the whole nine. So I'll be sure to share those with you when I get it done. Thank you so, so much for watching. As always, head down to the comments. Let me know your favorite project. And also, if you're new, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any future Halloween or other DIYs beyond that. Like I mentioned in the video, I do have my fence picket video coming for you next week and a ton more ideas coming right after that. So be sure to stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!